Oh, hi. You want to see some tanks? Well, hello again, my Dusky Modeling friends. My name is Tomo, you are you, and this, all of this, is my small YouTube channel. The best channel in the world. In the world. In today's video, I'm really excited to show you two tanks. Well, there were supposed to be three tanks, but I forgot one at work. Two tanks from World War I. We're going to be taking a look at the British and the French side with the FD-17 and the Whippet on the British side. The third one that I wanted to show was German, was this little beauty, but I will leave this one for the next video. Best thing about these two model kits is of course their price. They're both 30 euros and both offer incredible detail for the money and one of them actually has, well not full interior, but at least the driver's compartment is detailed. So. That's really good. Both of them are 135th scale and they're both from Mang. Company Mang Models is a Chinese company and they have absolutely fantastic model kits. If you do not know, check their webpage. It's a little bit slow, but you're gonna see them. The first model kit on display will be the French FT-17. It is a 2013 release and this model that we're gonna see today is a 2014 rebox with some new parts added. The second one is a Whippet 2015 release and it is absolutely fantastic as well. Timestamps for these two model kits are in the description of this video. So you can just skip ahead if you would like or just watch the whole thing because why not? And if you would like to see the third tank that is missing from this review, please let me know down in the comments below as well. With all that out of the way, let us jump into the boxes and see what's inside. And we start our review with this French FT-17 tank with riveted turret, model number TS-011. It is a 135th scale model that is around 30 euros, depending on where you are. Uh, and has some cool features, one of which is a uh, diorama base. It has interior parts for the driver and it can be displayed with an open or closed hatch. It has a movable suspension system and workable tracks that are included. You have to assemble them. It has options for an 8mm Hotchkins or M1914 machine gun rack that is also included. Upon opening the box we are greeted with 10 sprues tightly packed in a very small containing box. Uh, 10 sprues, two of which of course are doubled. And then we have some photo edge parts, decals and instruction manual. You also get a bag that contains tracks and some metallic parts for the suspension. Two of the sprues are dedicated to building a diorama base on which the tank stands and the rest are basically just for a tank. Viewing this model from close up or top down, you will see that it is absolutely a big beautiful masterpiece of plastic. Being a tank from World War I, it has so much detail on the outside and every single detail has been faithfully recreated and represented on each molded part. It is this exact attention to detail that kind of just draws you in and makes you want to open the box, tear into the bags and build this model. Keep in mind that this model is around 30 euros and it has an interior. Okay, it's not full interior, but at least it has some. And other manufacturers would probably charge more for it. I'm talking to you, Tamiya. So far, all the main models that I've been able to review or just see inside when we get them in the shop, have been absolutely fantastic. Yes, I've been overcritical sometimes in the past, but I just call it as I see it. And I give praise when I see something that it's praiseworthy. And this one surely is praiseworthy. It has all the checks that I would expect from a model. It is highly detailed, it has good surface detail, it has nice attachment points, the plastic is fairly soft and rigid at the same time. It's not one of those crappy white plastics uh, like Keller has and every panel is faithfully recreated it doesn't have any flash well I say that's but you know an odd ball here and there but it, that's like again nitpicking a lot anyway all the details are absolutely fantastic as you can see from the close-up shots and it's just this level of detail that is absolutely astonishing and you'll see in a moment here 
just look at this faithfully recreated machine gun or this support side support strut I guess it's called I don't know comment down below how tell me how wrong I am anyway look at that it is absolutely fantastic even the engraved uh, numbers you can see them very clearly and it's this level of detail that just takes your breath away and also the diorama base is pretty decent too it has some bags on the top and then you have some wood that rip, that's lining the walls of the trenches it's absolutely fantastic for the price that you get I have absolutely no complaint about this one and I think that whomever is gonna attempt to build this one is gonna have a good time doing it and I'm pretty sure that there are no fit issues or very little fit issues if any for this model tracks are of course plastic and they come in this little bag and then you have some metal parts that are for the suspension and of course photo edge not particularly numerous but effective and of course we have a small decal sheet of paper for two paint schemes and of course the two paint schemes first is the 304th tank brigade u.s army verdun october 1918 version which is this of course lovely one with a heart and the second one is defense forces uh, national revolutionary army china 1929 which is of course with a triangle Again, pretty simple, straightforward. Which one you go for, it's up to you. And of course the manual, black and white manual. It has some history on the tank in various languages on the front, three pages or four pages. And of course don't eat the paint, don't drink the glue and all that stuff. Uh, and then we come to the actual manual. It is pretty simple, straightforward. It guides you through nicely. It's a shame that it's a black and white manual, but you know, it's okay it it doesn't feel very um, rushed it's very methodical maybe you kind of have to get used to some of the symbols if you are not used to Meng's uh, particular manuals but again very beautifully represented and I think to the point without any fuss or you know overly exaggerated lines I'm talking to you Heller for our second tank, this is a Mark A Whippet, British medium tank, model number TS021. Price point around 30 euros again. It is a 135th scale model that has movable machine guns, realistic drive sprockets and drive chains, cement free track links included, and three paint schemes provided, which is, hmm, which is not exactly accurate for this particular version of this model. Maybe it's a one off, but in this particular case, we only have a piece of paper depicting two paint schemes which I don't know maybe it's a one-off thing again or it's a regular recurrence so let me know down in the comments below if you have the same problem or had the same problem with your version of Whip It Mark A. Upon opening the box of course you get 11 sprues although they're not seen on this video because some of them are doubled and tripled. The tripled sprue is the one that contains the tracks and then of course the two double sprues contains uh, various gears and running wheels and of course the machine gun and all that stuff uh, of course you get the cable a tow hook a decal sheet of paper and the manual with the paint schemes two paint schemes in this particular instance like with the previous ft17 tank this again is a very beautifully faithfully recreated model that takes your breath away with lots of beautiful detail on the outside because this one of course doesn't have an interior but nevertheless it is absolutely fantastic the attachment points for the parts are fairly reasonably long maybe a little bit short in some cases but they're okay the plastic is nice soft semi soft plastic and it doesn't have any flash absolutely any flash at all it makes you wonder how some other manufacturers are struggling with their newer releases. For 30 euros or less or more depending on where you live, you get an absolute jam of a tank that you will absolutely enjoy building. And if you did build this tank already, please let the community down in the comments below know how well or not this tank goes together because I have no idea. The detail is phenomenal. Just look at these gaps in the panels. They don't look toyish. In fact, they look pretty darn realistic, even not painted and laid out in sprue form. Of course, you get tracks that you have to cut out and that's a bit of a bummer, but you know, it's a part of a build and that's again an appeal for the tank. Like I've mentioned previously, you get this little tow wire 
that is attached to the side of the tank and of course you get a beautifully printed decal sheet of paper with crisp and bright insignias and markings for the three versions and although you only have two paint schemes I guess you'll have to go on an internet of things and find the third one for yourself or just write to Meng to give you a copy whichever works for you. And here we go, this is the first paint scheme, it's a British one, May 1918 version. As preserved in the Royal Museum of Armed Forces and Military History in Belgium. And the second one again is from the British Army, August 1918, as preserved in the Tank Museum in UK. What about the manual? Well, it's a very simple and straightforward black and white manual with some interesting history on the tank in various languages on the front pages. And of course the warnings, don't eat the parts, don't drink the paint, don't play with glue and all that stuff. But once you get past that, you have a nice, clean, simple instruction that is easy to read, um, nicely spread out, it's not overly complicated, it doesn't feel rushed. And it only has 16 pages. It's a bit of a shame that it's not a fully colored manual, but I think that Meng doesn't want you to be too spoiled when you build these kits. God knows, you only pay 30 euros for it. Anyway, a beautiful manual. I'm sure you will agree. Or not, you know, tell me down in the comments below. And that's basically it. Pretty nice, isn't it? Anyway, thank you so very much for watching. If you have been, thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye bye.